This tutorial was made with Unity 4.3.1 and Unreal 4.0.2 on April 5th, 2014. If you're watching this far into the future, well, hello from the past, and also things might be a little different for you. First of all, why would you want to import meshes from Unity? Right now, Unreal doesn't have its own marketplace, and I know they're trying to work to change that in the future, and it's a top priority, but right now there's nothing that rivals Unity 4's marketplace. Also, a lot of us developers have already bought and paid for assets from the Unity store, and we'd like to continue using them while we wait for the Unreal Marketplace to set itself up. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get started. First, open up Unreal to your level, or make a new level. It doesn't really matter, we just need some workspace. In the Unreal Editor Content Browser, create a new folder called Imports, or Workspace, or whatever you want to call it. Just select the Game folder in the Content Browser, and right-click to select New Folder. Now go to Unity and download and import all the assets that you want to bring over to Unreal. In Unity's Project tab, right-click on the Assets folder itself and select Show in Explorer. This will show you the subfolder that contains all of your imported models. At this point, you can close Unity. In Explorer, open your Assets folder and you'll see subfolders for each of your imported packages. Open any of them and just start looking for your FBX files. I have a lot of different packages, so I'm going to pick one that's a pretty good example of the process. As you can see, this file is an FBX file. This process doesn't work with other files like OBJ files. For those kinds of files, you'll need to import them into another uh, 3D modeling program and export them to be FBXs. Now just drag and drop your FBX file from the Explorer window to Unreal's Content Browser panel. I recommend doing this one at a time to verify that each object is importing properly. When you drag your FBX file into Unreal, you'll get a pop-up window requesting you to verify your FBX import options. Let's go over these one by one, but you can also check out the official Unreal documentation for more information. I'll post a link to that in the description of this video. All of these options depend on your specific model that you're importing, so you'll have to experiment a little bit if it doesn't seem perfect the first time. The first thing you'll have to specify is what kind of model you're importing. A static mesh doesn't have animations, like a house or a table. A skeletal mesh has rigging and animations, like a character moving around. And an animation is just the actual animation itself. We're importing something without animations, it's just a table, and I know this because I've used it in Unity before. So I'm going to select Static Mesh. This tutorial will only cover static mesh imports right now, simply because I don't really have anything to show as an example for skeletal meshes or animations. However, if you look at the Unreal documentation, you'll find information for those kinds of meshes too. Your LOD group is a drop-down that helps define when this type of object is available compared to other types of objects. Small props, for example, will load after the architecture when a player approaches both objects. You can change this at any time, but just be consistent. The Normals drop-down offers options for calculating normals, importing normals, and importing normals and tangents. I usually hit Import Normals and Tangents, and if they did not get imported, then that mesh didn't have them and I can just calculate them later. Combined meshes is important if you have one FBX file with a lot of little meshes inside of it that should be one mesh. For example, say you have a mesh for a house that has a mesh for a roof and a mesh for a door. If you just wanted it to be one big house model without all the individual pieces, then you'd check this and combine it. If you wanted the door to be an individual mesh, then you wouldn't combine it. For this example, I'm just importing a table, and I really just want it to be one mesh, even if it has other meshes in it, so I'm going to combine it. Now click on Advanced. If your FBX contains LOD meshes, then you'll want to import mesh LODs. I usually leave this on because sometimes I don't know if my model has an LOD already. Replace Vertex Colors preserves your model's vertex colors when you use the Mesh Paint Unreal tool. It's pretty explanatory, but I usually leave this unchecked anyway. Remove Degenerates cleans up your model by removing stray polys. I like to keep this on unless I run into a weird issue with the model's import, and then I'll just turn it back on again. One convex hull per UCX helps you set up the collision in the editor. Keep this checked unless you have other plans for your collision. 
Import Materials works for any materials created for your meshes in Unreal. Since we're importing them from Unity, we likely don't have materials for these objects, so we'll have to make them. Sometimes you'll see a .mat file, but that's usually a different kind of materials file, and not specific to Unreal. If you're not sure about whether your object has Unreal materials, then go ahead and check it anyway. If there's nothing to import, there's nothing to import, and it's not going to mess anything up. I usually keep mine checked unless I'm certain that it doesn't have a material file. Import Textures is on by default if you're importing materials already, but if not, you can check this to import any textures that might be assigned to this model otherwise. Usually, check this unless you know for certain that your model doesn't use textures, or if you don't care about textures for this model. I usually keep this checked. If Invert Normal Maps is enabled, then your normal map values will be inverted. Pretty self-explanatory also. This is uncommon in my models, so I leave it unchecked. Override full name is helpful for organizational purposes. If checked, then your mesh's import path field will be used as the full name for the imported mesh. This keeps things pretty tidy and it's easy to track down the original files this way, so I just keep it checked. Okay, so just hit import at this point. Okay, you'll likely get a warning message at this point telling you that your FBX is out of date. Uh, it might also tell you that there's no smoothing group information that was associated with your FBX scene. These are very common. From what I've researched about this, it doesn't seem to be a problem at all, so you can dismiss it. Um, if you do run into errors, then you should post on the Unreal Answers board for help. But really, these are just warning messages. Okay, you should now see your mesh in the Imports folder. If you don't see it, then make sure you imported it to the right folder. You might have dragged it to another folder by accident. And you should also see at least one material sphere if you imported those. Double click your mesh to open the mesh editor. Your mesh might be very small at this point. If it is, you can fix its default scale here. In the details panel, just click on the build settings and you'll find a build scale listed there. My table is about the right size, but if your object is extremely small, you might set this to 50 or 100 and see how that looks and just hit apply and it'll save your changes. You can always adjust this later, and you can also use the regular scale tool if you just want to change the size of one object. Okay, let's go ahead and close this. You might see some pure white spheres in your imports folder. This means that the textures were not imported with the FBX file, and that's okay, we can fix it. First, we'll need to import our textures by dragging them from the texture folder and dropping them into the imports folder. You'll notice that they probably have the same exact name as the spheres. We have metal 01 over here, and we have metal 01D and metal 01N. That's going to be the diffuse and normal. So we want both of the metal 01 files and both of the metal 02 files. Just drag and drop the files into your content browser. Okay, now we want to apply our textures to our material spheres. Just open one of them up, and you'll notice that you have a widget that probably is white, pure white. So this just means that it was trying to reference a texture that didn't exist. So we can just delete it because we're just going to drag in our textures that have the same name. So since I'm working on metal 01, I'm going to drag over metal 01D and metal 01N. Now this might look very different from your own materials that you're working on. Um, the basics are going to be the same. You might have metallic, specular, or other things that you want to hook up, and that's fine. Usually you'll just have a diffuse and a normal, sometimes just a diffuse. That's all okay too. Um, you might also just have a model that doesn't even have a texture. And that's fine, you can apply a texture um, in Unreal later on. So since this is our uh, diffuse, which is our base color, we're just going to connect this to the material's base color. And you'll notice that the sphere has now changed color, and it now reflects um, what our diffuse looks like. We'll do the same for our normal, and then we'll hit apply, 
save and then close it and you'll see that over here our metal is now completely set up and we'll do the same exact thing for any other textures and materials that we have for our models this one only has two um, you might only have one you might have none or you might have dozens so um, it really depends on the model that you're importing you'll notice if you double click on your model that all of those textures have been automatically applied if they have not been applied you'll notice in your details panel that you have element 0, element 1, perhaps other elements and these all um, can be, you can just drag and drop any of these materials over there so if I wanted to have it have metal legs and uh, a rusty kind of top I can just swap them or I can make the whole thing rusty you can do that here and that that just immediately applies it to the model okay now we're going to just test out our model to see what it looks like in our level I'm just going to drag and drop it somewhere in my level and hit play here's my table looks about maybe a little small but looks fine um, the textures are showing up well and if I get close to it I can walk right through it there's no collision so um, we're going to add collision in the engine you could add if you wanted to have more complex collision then you would want to modify the model itself but we're just going to apply collision using Unreal double click on your mesh in your toolbar you'll see um, a green icon that says collision just click on that you probably won't see anything change when you turn on collision because we almost certainly don't have collision that's why we were able to walk through it sometimes it might be the wrong size or it might have imported off center of the rest of the model but if you don't see anything then we're just going to apply it right away so go to your collision menu and you can select any of the default collision uh, settings try and find one that is the most simple that you can get away with since in my game I don't really care if a player gets underneath the table I just don't want them to walk through it then the most simple version of collision is fine hit save and that applies collision to all instances of this table now we can test it again and I am unable to walk through this. In fact, I can stand on it. So there are a lot of caveats to this process and it really depends on the kind of model that you're trying to import. If your model did not come with any kind of textures, you could always apply your own kinds of materials. I could just take this brick color and just put it on my table. So you should be able to import most of the things that you've downloaded from Unity. Anything with animations will be a little bit trickier, but it's pretty much the same workflow. Um, there will be a couple of small hitches with certain more complex models, but as long as you can isolate the specific step that it's failing at, and you post in the answers forum for Unreal, then you should be able to find someone who can give you a tip. I hope this helped and I hope this helped and thank you for watching.